So let's look at these uh, scriptures together. First Peter chapter 4 verses 11 through 19. And it says this, or 12 through 19. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or a thief, or an evildoer, or as a meddler. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it's time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not, do not obey the gospel of God? And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. Let's just pray, shall we? Father, this morning we thank you for your word. Lord, it's good to be encouraged. It's good to be built up. But it's also good to see uh, some of the dynamics of faith and, and life uh, don't actually fit in with the narrative of, of some of the world. But Lord, we can expect some of these things to happen. And your word asks us to be strong, be faithful, and turn to God and depend upon God. So this morning, I, again, I just pray that as believers, you will help us to, to fully understand what it means to trust God in the midst of suffering. We pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So as we look at a topic that uh, is, again, it's not very popular to talk about this in certain uh, Christian circles. Uh, Peter's visited this topic a number of times in this particular letter to, to the churches that he's writing to. And he's now returning to this topic in verse 19 one last time. He finishes this chapter off, chapter 4, talking about how to respond to suffering. And again, like I'm entitling it, trusting God in the midst of suffering. And while we're looking at this subject, we might find it one or two places here and there in the New Testament. Peter's actually discussed this maybe four or five times. He's looked at it in this one letter, chapter 2, verse 21, he talks about it. Chapter 3, verses 14 and 17, he talks about it. In this chapter, chapter 4, we've looked at it a number of times. As he begins chapter 4, right in the first verse, he talks about suffering. And so as we look at these verses today, I guess, I guess Peter wants us to understand, he wants us to grasp hold that this issue of suffering is for something that you and I as Christians need to get our heads around. And so as we look at these four uh, verse, these number of verses today, we see a number of lessons on suffering and what we need to know about trusting God in the midst of suffering. So let's first of all understand that in this kind of dynamic, suffering shouldn't surprise us. Suffering shouldn't surprise us. Verse 12, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. Don't be surprised. Suffering shouldn't surprise a Christian. And I believe this is a message the Christian church needs to hear and be prepared for, especially in these times. We're going to go towards the end of times and I believe suffering is going to come upon us. 
And what we're having put in front of us today by Peter is to say that it's going to come upon us. Don't be surprised. It's something you should be prepared for. I believe the church over a number of years, I think it's been mollycoddled. Do you, do you understand that word, mollycoddled? Wrapped in cotton wool. You know, kind of sugar-coated. And I think that's been the message given to the church. Come, come to our church and we'll provide everything for you and your family. We'll do everything we can to keep you. So when we've got you and your family, we can say we're the biggest church. We're the, we're the best church. The best of everything. We've got the biggest campus. They're also told that if they become Christians, that all the problems will go away. The health, wealth and prosperity teaching, which is not biblical. Yes, God blesses. God will give. God will supply our needs according to his riches in glory. But that's not the message of the gospel. The message of the gospel is take up your cross daily and follow me. What does the cross portray? It portrays suffering. It portrays what Jesus did for you and I on the cross. And that's what the church is missing. That's what happens when we look at the Bible and we take the Bible. We read the Bible and see the reality that suffering is part of the Christian life. I certainly don't want to tickle your ears. No pastor should want to tickle anybody's ears. Ever. Because the reality is when you become a Christian, the struggles will come. Because you're following Jesus Christ. Because when you say yes to Christ, the target on your back begins to grow. And the more you get into Christ and the teaching of Christ, the bigger that target will become. You know when people go to churches where they don't talk about it, these people's expectations are, are so en engrossed in all the things of, of church. When those expectations are not met in some way, shape or form, they're going to leave and find somewhere else. They're going to try and find somewhere else that will provide what they're looking for. Well, can you imagine if, if some of those people experienced suffering and they've never been prepared for it? That's it, I'm done, I'm off. I'm gone. If that's what being a Christian is all about, I, I'm, not, I'm not into that. I'm finished. Again, I've got news. Discipleship is tough. Following Jesus is tough. And suffering is part of the Christian life. And more often than not, it's very painful. I know most of you. I know what's happened to you. I know where you've been. I know the things you've been through. We've been through them together. And it's tough. And it's hard. Well, the reality is when somebody becomes a believer... They should be pointed to the Word of God. They should read the Word of God. They should look at the truths that are taught in the Word of God. They should hear the reality of what coming to faith means and that suffering is inevitable. And when they get to understand this, yes it hurts, yes it's terrible to go through some of the things, but they will then be able to handle it in a way that they know that God is beside them as they're going through it. The last thing a Christian should be when suffering comes is surprised. Peter starts this section of, of, of Bible verses with beloved or dear friends. He wants them to understand the dynamic about God. Because this phrase actually means those who are deeply loved by God. He's telling them they're deeply loved by God. 
And this is the key to what Peter wants you and I to understand and to know. That God loves you deeply and profoundly. Therefore, don't be surprised when you suffer as a Christian. It's not because God's wielding the big stick. It's because God loves you that he allows it to happen to you. And all this in a world where we can have everything we want. The pleasures of life. Finance, relationship, possessions, instant gratification. And you're telling me if I become a Christian I'm going to suffer? Oh, I don't think so. Well here, Peter wants us to understand that this is part of who we become as believers. And I want you to understand that while we suffer in many different ways, and, and I'm not minimalizing any way you have suffered or about to suffer or going to suffer, there are believers in other parts of the world who fully understand what I'm talking about this morning. Over the years, there's been a number of headlines in, in different uh, parts of the world. This is a headline in Pakistan. Worshippers attacked on Easter Sunday. This is a headline in Indonesia. Pastor still missing. A headline in Bangladesh. Lay pastor beheaded. In Iran. Pastor hauled before the Islamic courts. In India, villagers beat Christians and burning down the prayer hall. In Eritrea, 16 pastors and 900 Christians in jail. A headline in Afghanistan, Christians martyred. That's suffering. Chuck Swindle, a great pastor and preacher I often live, listen to on Moody Radio has said about suffering we should view the Christian life like a schoolroom where we should expect examinations and tests maturity in the Christian life is measured by our ability to withstand the examinations and tests without having them shake our foundation or throw us into an emotional tailspin. Do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you. Suffering should never surprise us. Secondly, Peter wants us to understand that suffering brings us closer to God. Look at verses 13 and 14. But rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. If you're insulted for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. What Peter is saying is if you and I are truly born again of the spirit of God, he's telling us that we will run to God and not away from him. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I know when things happen, our tendency can be, I, I don't want to go near God. I don't want to run to God. I, I want to retreat. But Peter's asking us to do the opposite. He's asking us to run to God. The word says that they will persecute us. Why? Because they persecuted Jesus. And the closer we get to Jesus, the more you and I will be persecuted. That's why the world doesn't persecute a worldly Christian. Godly people who follow Christ will be persecuted. Persecution is a sign that you're doing what God wants you to do because you're getting closer to Jesus, closer to the target. And that target who we've said is Jesus Christ. This verse or these two verses talk about three ways that we'll be involved with who Jesus is and get closer to Jesus. When we suffer, he will show us participation. 
in verse 13, we will share in his, in his sufferings. It says, but rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings. We participate with Christ. I don't know about you, if there's somebody you want to participate with, it's Jesus Christ. And he came and he was persecuted. He suffered. You know, there's so many young people today want to emulate you know, the superstars, the sports people, the rock stars, all of these different idols they call them. Well here, Peter wants us to know that if we have participation in our Christian life with sufferings, we're sharing in the sufferings of Christ. There's also exaltation. It says in verse 13, we will rejoice when we see Christ. That was the verse that that young man said in his testimony. You may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. When Jesus Christ is revealed, we're going to rejoice. When we're here on this earth, suffering will be for a little while. Then we will see him face to face. Then we will glory as Jesus is revealed. And you and I will be glad. There's also impartation as we suffer and getting close to God. We will experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 14. You are blessed because the Spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. This is the Holy Spirit that was poured out at Pentecost on the disciples, on all the apostles. What happened before Pentecost? All the apostles ran away. They didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit to keep them close to the Lord Jesus Christ. But when the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them, they all were suffering for Jesus. Every single one of them was martyred apart from John. Why? Because they had the Holy Spirit upon them. And when we're suffering for Christ, I believe He will give us the power to go through the suffering. Because it's the Holy Spirit that enables us. Let me just tell you, if you're suffering right now, this word is asking you to go closer to God. Don't run away from Him. Go closer to God. Suffering shouldn't surprise us. Suffering brings us closer to God. Thirdly this morning, suffering should help us evaluate. Verses 15 through 18. Let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or an evildoer or as a meddler. If anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. Suffering should help us evaluate. Why is this happening? Is God allowing this to teach me something, to allow me to get stronger, allow me to get closer to Him? Or, in this instance, is it for another reason? Most of you know, back in England, I used to go into the prisons. And uh, when I became a Christian, I felt... God speak to me about ministering in that dynamic. And I used to go in on a regular basis, weekly basis, and minister to those in jail. Uh, form friendships with some of them who've been in there a long time. Different categories, right from, you know, somebody who might be stealing something to somebody who, who murdered many times. And often I would get letters from, from these prisoners, from hardened criminals. They also met Jesus in prison like I did. Not as a prisoner, all you visitors. I was a guest. I was a guest. Okay. But these guys had become Christians in prison. And when most of them would write to me, I'd read some of the letters <clears throat> that would say something like, I did the crime, 
Now I've got to do the time. In other words, they got to the point where they admitted they'd done something wrong and it was because they'd come to Christ that the Holy Spirit was working in them. A lot of criminals who don't come to Christ will be criminals for all of their life. They'll never admit anything. But these guys would, would admit and confess. They, they'd confess to God that they messed up. And guess what? God blessed these men. And he'll bless anybody who doesn't make excuses for their wrongdoings. He'll forgive anybody for anything. And that's what Peter's point is here <clears throat> in verse 15. If you've done wrong, you can expect to suffer. You can expect to pay a price. And, and this is only part of suffering, a little part of suffering. And this is not in every case. But it should make us want to examine ourselves and evaluate ourselves. This is the exception to the rule of suffering. <clears throat> I often hear people say, well, I must have done something wrong. Well, that's not a bad thing to say sometimes. Because God might want us to look in before we look out. And he might want us to evaluate some of the things that we have done. Yes, it is possible as a Christian to suffer for doing wrong things. And look at what Peter does here. He specifies four categories of wrongdoing. <clears throat> the first three. I'll just take a drink. <clears throat> the first three all go together. Murderers, thieves, criminals, or evildoers. Then he says, even as a meddler. Well, this doesn't quite seem to fit in with the first three. You mean a meddler is on the same page as a murderer, a thief, criminal? One, one who gets involved in the affairs of others when they have no business being there is what this word meddler means. Peter is saying we can suffer for doing wrong. And while it may not be as a criminal, it certainly could be as a meddler. I believe there are meddlers in every church. There are meddlers who are involved in the life of others when they shouldn't be. Talking about things that don't concern them. By doing so, they're making things worse, not better. <clears throat> they like to talk, gossip about people, situations in the church because they think they're right and everyone else is wrong. That kind of language against another person is no good whatsoever. And that's why Peter classes it with these three other wrongdoings gossiping in church brings down curses on people bad comments about people brings curses on people I'm just telling you over years I've been under curses on many many occasions I know it I've felt it it's a spiritual dynamic and it's because people are gossiping. And I believe here Peter wants to bring this out along with those other three because for me, as they talk gossip and they, they're thinking they're right and other people are wrong, that's why Peter puts it with those other things and he classes it with murder because it's a form of character assassination. It's so important, church, that we get this right. We're all guilty of it. We can all be guilty of it. 
But Peter puts it in his word. You think, how can he just put that along with murder and these other things? Because it's so important. If somebody comes to you and says, have you heard about? Say, no one, I don't want to. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to get involved in it. It's bad. It's not good. And this is what Peter's saying. If we get involved in some of these kind of things, he's saying that we can suffer because of it. And Peter's asking each one of us to look inside and examine ourselves. What we do and what we say. And he doesn't want any of us to suffer for this kind of behavior. Suffering should help us to evaluate. And if we suffer and we evaluate and we've not done anything in this category, then, then fine. You're suffering for something different, for one of these other things. It's clear that verse 17 is talking to the church. Judgment will begin in the household of God. The Lord starts with his own children. <clears throat> You and I are going to be held more accountable. You know, it's no good me having a family and, and bringing up the girls like we did and uh, they can say and do what they like and I go outside and I start chastising the neighbor's kids. Oh, you, have to, you can't kick the ball over in my yard while my kids are going and knocking the ball over everybody else's yard. It's the same in the church. He needs the church to be right with God before anything else. Judgment begins in the household of God. Suffering should help us to evaluate. Suffering brings us close to God. Suffering shouldn't surprise us. Fourth and finally this morning, suffering teaches us to trust God. The title of my message, Trusting God in the Midst of Suffering. Verse 19. Therefore, let those who suffer according to God's will entrust their souls to a faithful creator while doing good. When suffering comes, and it will come, it will happen sooner or later, and we can't do much about the situation, whatever that might be, the health issue, financial issue, the job issue, the relational issue, there's one thing we can do in the midst of suffering, and that's commit ourselves to our faithful Creator God. We can do that. To trust or commit is actually a banking term. It's a banking term that means to deposit for safekeeping. In other words, Peter was reminding them that when you and I became believers and committed our lives to God, we are simply giving back to God what he had created. In other words, as creator, God knows best the needs of his beloved creatures. And we need to trust him and put those things in his hands. He's made us. And if we're going through something, we give it back to God. We share it with God and we trust him. So that in the midst of suffering, we can... Trust Him with everything. Well, this morning, if we're in this place, how can we trust God? How can we allow that to happen? Well, God's given us something to take our minds off some of the things that might be going on. Yes, to entrust our souls to a faithful creator, but it says, while doing good. While doing good. No matter what the circumstances, whatever is happening, respond by doing good. I believe Peter wants us to take the focus off us and put it on something else. Talked about this a few weeks ago. When we're going out and we're taking care of the homeless, we're doing what God wants us to do. We're reaching the neighborhood for Jesus Christ. We're inviting them to things that we're doing here. That the focus is not on us. It's taking the focus off me and we're doing something 
for God. As we close this morning, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you. It's going to happen. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Peter wants you and I to be prepared. Are you prepared to suffer for being a follower of Jesus Christ? If so, well, suffering shouldn't be a surprise. Suffering brings us closer to God. Suffering should help us evaluate. Suffering teaches us to, <clears throat> to trust God. That's what he's asking me, what he's asking you. During the offertory this morning, we, we're going to hear a song called He Will Carry You. Whatever's going on, He will carry us. Are you trusting God in the midst of suffering? Let's pray.